you guys remember when like station wagons that were raised and had sort of four by four styling, rugged styling and were all wheel drive? Do you remember that? Like Volvo, Audi, Subaru, I think those were the sort of pioneers of it. Oh, those are the days. But thankfully, Volvo keeps it going really well with their cross country models. And I'm excited to say that this weekend I got to spend it in the new V90 cross country. So it's built in the same sort of architecture as the S90 and XC90, but it has a ground clearance of 210 millimeters, which means that's pretty impressive. That's what that means. I went to, I should probably drive, I'm gonna get to work. <laughs> Sorry, just chatting away to you guys. To the West Coast, Na West Coast, West Coast Nature Reserve and Titties Bay. That is an actual place. Google it if you don't know. And this guy's so sort of sure-footed and confident on all the terrain that I put it on that I was left feeling rather confident myself in my off-roading ability. Sort of gives you a bit of excitement because you realise that you can sort of explore areas and stuff that normally you'd have to consider if you're in a non all wheel drive car or not having the ground, ground not having the ground clearance that you have say in this good old fella ah, did you know yeah. that? Yeah. obviously safety features it's a Volvo there are too many for me to list but just know that it remains one of the safest cars on the road, of course. Thank you, Volvo. So you have different driving modes, of course, the usuals. So you've got comfort, eco, and dynamic. But with the off-road mode, it will activate hill descent control. It will adjust the throttle mapping. And if you have the optional air suspension, it will adjust that as well. Now, the interior of this V90 cross country is pretty Volvo-like, in fact it's completely Volvo-like, especially with the sole, um, t okay, hang on. So, in my last video, in the S90, I realized now that I was pressing the auto handbrake like a complete twist. I've now subsequently found out that on the screen is where I turn it off, thank you very much, because I hate it, um, but guys, I have those moments, forgive me for making a mistake. Trees, I got some comments from you people. You don't like mistakes. So everything you can do on this screen, pretty much. So if I can't find anything or I think that something doesn't work or whatever, I just go to the screen. You've got options of two turbo diesels or two turbo petrol engines. I am in the T6 all-wheel drive inscription, which comes with a two litre twin charged um, petrol engine and you're looking at 235 kilowatts of power and 400 newton meters of torque you can get from 0 to 100 in 6,3 seconds or something along those lines that's quick for a big car claim fuel consumption is at 7.7 .7 liters per 100 k's I cannot see a thing. So like I say, this is the inscription trim level, which means it is the, comes with all the bells and whistles. And it will cost you just under 922,000 Rand. But if you get something like the Adventure Pack and all the options that are offered with Volvo, and the Adventure Pack is pretty cool because it gives you things like heated seats, the sunroof, 360 degree camera, head up display, all that jazz. Um, you're gonna go just over a million. It also gives you the compass in here. So now I can see I'm going west. I find that a bit strange. For, I mean, I've seen them on lots of cars. It's not a Volvo thing. But um, I suppose I never know which way is west, north, east, south anyway. So that helps. I don't think I've ever wanted to know that though. Anywho, the thing about this car, it's got such a sort of laid back demeanor. And, you know, I want to go traveling up the west coast again in it and I could spend, happily spend 
a, a long road trip in this car and there are very few cars that I can say that about. Don't be a twist. Just stop your crying, it's a sign of the time. 